Today we're going to continue playing catch up and do our August wrap up. What month are we now? September. Okay. We're midway through September. By the time this gets up, who knows, it might be October. So these are books that we read mostly while we were at Worldcon, because uh, we had a busy month other than that. Take it away. So, as ever, in order of least liked to most liked, my first is Bleeding Edge by Thomas Pynchon, which is, it's fair to say, a little outside my normal wheelhouse. I think I saw this for 50p in a charity shop and thought, I know that name. Yeah, sure. It's a bit more literary, though I gather it's not proper literary. Um, Probably somewhere in between new weird and literary, except that he's been writing since the 70s, so... Whilst I, I do like a bit of uh, new weird, it's normally new weird crossed with genre, so like Nick Harpe or Claire North, whereas this is weird crossed with crime, which is not something I normally read. Um, it's kind of long and rambly, and you can tell it's literary because there's no real conclusion to the main plot. It's got some really interesting stuff in it. And the protagonist has um, quite a lot of drive and hustle to her. Uh, she reminds me very much of the protagonist of Russian Doll, um, down to the background and accent. Um, however, um, you mentioned you've been writing since the 70s. Um, the internet is quite central and it feels like somebody's just transplanted the cyberpunk of the 70s into the 90s and sort of updated it a bit but it's all sort of virtual reality but never described as such sort of people use computers and then they're in the suddenly in these weird terrains um it's a bit odd in that regard um we did finish it which i'm impressed by yeah. The um, one thing I would note is the protagonist feels a bit strange. Possibly, you know, a woman written by somebody who isn't one and possibly hasn't spoken to one for a while. Um, well, not many at least. No. Um, it sounds like uh, it, it's written almost as if he's just done a pronoun flip. So, yeah, it's... Um, you know, it's certainly more readable than I anticipated it to be. Um, and I wasn't actually, I mentioned there was no conclusion. I wasn't left with that kind of crushing, but what happened at the end? Um, it's almost kind of slice of life fiction during a very tumultuous period in somebody's life. But equally, nothing really changes. Character development. No. So, I was different. Yeah. Again, going from my least favourite up to favourite, mine are all packed very closely together this month. So I rated this 3.75 stars. This is The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James. And a Christmas present, I think. Yes, from you. Thank you. I liked it, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this follows a girl who's the last person alive on her spaceship, um, a ship that's kind of uh, it's kind of a generation ship, it's expected to travel over a long period of time to get to a new planet. And she's been on her own for a very long time, with some contact with Earth, but the time delay is getting bigger and bigger. And then she finds out that Earth has launched another ship, and there's a boy on that ship, who, um, who starts communicating with her, and they exchange messages. That's kind of the setup for this. Um, I won't go much more into it because it is actually quite twisty. Um, I'd say this one's probably, I've seen it on adult sci-fi tables, but it had, to me, quite a YA feel to it. And that's not just the age of the protagonist, but um, it's very kind of first person and you get to kind of see the way that she looks at the world. Um, it involves fandom, which is quite fun, so obviously when she doesn't have much to entertain herself with, then she writes fan fiction of one of the uh, Earth TV shows that she loves, because there's not enough of it, and she has this huge delay before more episodes, which is quite fun, but I'd say does age it down a little as well, because not only are you following a teenager, you get to read the bad fan fiction she writes. <laughs> um, having said all that, though, this did 
it's very much a thriller and it did go places I didn't expect. It is darker, more suspenseful. I think I was expecting kind of a rom-com in space and it is not really that. But yeah, overall I quite enjoyed this and I absolutely like flew through it and I will probably pick up more of her books. Next up is One Way by S.J. Morden. This I picked up in Dublin while we were at Worldcon. Um, it's an author that I've read quite a bit of before. It's depicted as um, quite a gritty um, cross between a crime novel and The Martian. In a future where corporations are big, powerful and evil, they... Future? <laughs> They decide to the easiest way to set up a Mars base is to send convicts with the right skills. Um, and when they get there, people start dying. It's quite a good sort of murder mystery, um, and the uh, science fictional trappings and the kind of uh, the grittiness of how they're getting by on Mars uh, felt quite appealing and will probably appeal to people who enjoyed The Martian. Um, there's quite a lot of commentary about the organisation that got them there. However, I would note that it's a bit Gary Stu. So uh, the protagonist is also a convict, but rather than um, showing that, you know, Sometimes people do stuff that society doesn't appreciate and can still be good people and accomplish great things. He does, it, it, the story of his crime comes out during the book and it turns out to be something, I mean, it's very violent, but it is quite relatable. Um, and I think in some ways it would have been interesting to actually put a bit more distance there between us and the protagonist. It's a bit, it feels like a bit of a cop-out, um, if that's not too harsh. That's a fun, quick read. I think there's another one, isn't there? Uh, there is. Um, no way. Are you going to pick it up? Uh, yes, probably. The next one I'm going to talk about I read on ebook, and that's Sarah Gailey's Magic Liars. This is a very new release, um, and I did pick it up because my friend said that they were readers as well. So if you're watching this, you promised. They still have. <laughs> this book has a really fun premise, um, but is very tropey, but very aware of being tropey. The setup is that there is an unexpected death at a magic school, and the headmistress is slightly suspicious that maybe it's not just the accident and the magic police say that it is. So she calls in the sister of one of their teachers. Who happens to be a San Franciscan PI, a mundane one at that. So you've got her coming into this school, fish out of water story, trying to work out what's gone on, digging into all the kind of high school gossip, politics. Um, obviously it's quite... I, I really enjoyed like the main character's perspective on this because as you can imagine this is um, someone whose sister was told at a young age, you're magical, and she wasn't. And now she's been asked to come to this school and be around them all the time, and she has this kind of feeling of being out of place. Um, totally at all, doesn't at all sound like Harry Potter fanfic set in the American um, wizarding school. But from the point of view of Petunia, if she became a PI, yeah, and... To be honest, like the magic system isn't really explored. Um, it, it does feel like quite a generic setting, um, but it does some quite fun things with it. So I say the magic system isn't fully developed. There's some really interesting ideas in the magic system, but because it's from the point of view of someone who doesn't really understand it, then it's a bit hand wavy. Um, but I quite enjoyed that as a as a perspective, as someone who wasn't being taught how this all worked and just got thrown these difficult words, almost kind of if someone tried to step into a lab and understand what was going on. Um, I really enjoyed the relationship between the sisters. I didn't so much enjoy the romance, but I think for me that's because it's quite a short story and 
it's about a murder investigation. So anyone that gets introduced, I'm like, hmm, suspicious. So yeah, it didn't really get invested in that. And there is um, a prominent uh, lesbian relationship in it as well, which I don't think you see very often, although not the main character. And well, yeah, I, it was a lot of fun. I rated it four stars and actually I wasn't sure I'd be reading more Sarah Daly after I read Rivers of Teeth because uh, I didn't really get on with that but actually this I much preferred. So now they might be back on my watch list. For someone who really loves PI detective novels and magic schools this I could imagine someone you know really thinking this is absolutely a five star book but as someone who finds PI stories annoying this is actually a really good rating for me. Talking of authors on watch lists uh, Harry Connolly is an author that I've read some work of and really enjoyed. Um, I read his Great Way trilogy um, a few years ago and really enjoyed it. But this is actually the um, traditionally pubbed uh, series that uh, first got him known. Um, and I'd never read it. It's an urban fantasy series um, with a male lead actually an interesting contrast with um, One Way. The protagonist here is a violent person. They are a criminal. They have um, slightly bad things in the past and in one case actually got a friend of theirs killed. So there's quite a lot of guilt there. And he spend, he's, we start the book with him under a death sentence. He's been rescued or he's been freed from a mundane prison by a wizard and basically they're under a death sentence and um, they are he is required to do what the wizard says they are trying to track down a magical thing from beyond space and time and kill it i really enjoyed this i mean it's a little bit of its time um but i can imagine picking up uh, the rest of the series and seeing how it develops um, was it cancelled before it's finished though? Yes, um, the author has recently um, had a successful Kickstarter whereby he um, funded the next two books in the series um, because the traditional publisher dropped it. Uh, why you shouldn't always wait for a series to be complete before starting it. Other things I read this month are the first four in the Saga series. This is a reread. I told myself this year I would allow myself to do rereads, and I realised that before I picked up the eighth one, I needed to refresh my memory. Um, so I'm probably going to do a bit more of a wrap up once I've kind of caught all the way up. But I would just say they've stood up to rereading. I really enjoyed the first two, which is kind of how I felt the first time. The first two were 4.25s. Um, and then after that they go a little bit lower, kind of four, but I am intrigued to see how I get on as I go through the series. Will I enjoy it more now that it's fresher? Will I actually be able to reflect on it and go, eh, you know what, there's enough series out there. So rather than just keep buying them and going, yeah, then it'd be good to make a, make a decision. So yeah, so this was fun. Um, a nice thing to uh, whip through on my birthday. My next book is also something a bit different. Um, Sunstone by uh, Stjepan Sejic, which is an erotic comedy graphic novel. Um, and yes, there is a lot of um, nudity, um, as you might expect from the cover. Um, however, mostly there is a lot of heart, there's a lot of warmth, and quite a lot of jokes, um, and there's a, a really fun relationship uh, dynamic. It's not one that I feel comfortable reading everywhere in public, <laughs> um, but there are people I would recommend you to. It's a honestly sweet a, a, and in some ways kind of innocent <laughs> is oddly the takeaway flavour from this um, which if nothing else just the mental jarring between that and some of the other stuff um, is um, quite a, a fun mental tension to play with. 
And I think we uh, recommended this on Booktube, I think probably by Kitty G at a graphicathon a few years ago. Uh, yeah, so I still need to read this. But it is the first of a quite continued series, I think. Yeah. My last one is also a graphic novel, um, Nimona by Noel Stevenson, which is, I think, one that I had on my five-star TBR predictions video. I think I've nearly finished them now, maybe finished them. So, it's, I rated 4.25 stars, so yeah, yeah, it was a good prediction, reasonably so. Um, and it was a lot of fun, as people have been telling me for a long time. It follows a girl uh, called Nimona, who is a shapeshifter and a force of nature. And she particularly wants to be a sidekick to this supervillain, who, to be honest, isn't entirely sure why he needs a sidekick, but, you know, can't say no to her. Um, and yeah, so you've got this fun playing of being the villain, but it's not really that, because really what they're trying to do is expose police corruption um, and prove that the good guys are not actually as good as they say they are. And they have some, or he at least, the kind of supervillain, does have some morals, that kind of some lines he won't cross. Um, and he's kind of trying to teach them to her, because she's a little more of a force of nature. So uh, yeah, it was really fun. I loved the central relationship in this. It was like, and I, you know, it's not like a relationship. It's not like a romantic relationship. Um, it's just kind of, yeah, cute, fun, funny, silly. Yeah, and really nicely drawn. I, I really like the artwork. I think it makes an interesting contrast maybe to Saga, where, because it's got that ongoing structure I, I, whereas I quite like Nimona has quite a tight arc. Yes, yeah, true, yeah. Which I think might be the thing I like least about Saga, actually, is the fact that when I read a bit, then it feels like it almost gets to an end and then stuff happens to mean that it has to continue. Whereas this, yeah, just neat and done. So, yeah, it's lovely. Would recommend. Let us know if you've read any of these or any books by these authors. Was I a wuss for not being willing to read Sunstone in public? <laughs> Thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon.